Hey guys, it's mid-February in Mississippi and I thought I would do just a little video on what's happening at the farm this time of year. So February in Mississippi has been wet, super wet. Historic flooding happening unfortunately and my thoughts go out to all those in the Jackson Mississippi area certainly not pleasant to be out there we are quite lucky though in the sense that we are far away from any uh, rivers or any major waterways although we have over the last year done some work to our yard to help uh, prevent some of the water from flowing towards our house which has made a huge difference so there's definitely a ton of water um, the water or the ground beneath my feet is soggy so definitely Definitely a rainy, rainy February. So I thought we'd just take a wander around, see what's going on in the nature-friendly areas and within the garden, which is not that pretty, but certainly uh, we'll find something interesting here and there. Awesome. Well, we're standing in front of it, so we might as well take a look at the, the not so pretty garden. You can see all the moisture, just an incredible amount of moisture. This is the ditch that we put in this year, which has been actually incredibly helpful. I have some video on it. I could probably add to it to show you guys, but just it's been so helpful at pushing the water away from the house and um, also getting it out of the garden. So it is actually last year, this section right in here was always in a puddle, like could have had a pond there. Uh, so that ditch has made quite a bit of difference in reducing the amount of water. In addition, this area over here used to be all underwater, all, it was for the last like three months, of the, like December, January, February, probably even into March. It was, it was a lot of water. So just adding a ditch to the garden was a very simple thing that made a huge difference in the water level and I'll show you as a result of that our pond is far more full than it has been which is great because it's a bit of a leaky pond and by the end of summer it's looking pretty small so I'll be glad to actually have more water in the pond and much better place for it. So you can see that we have plastic down we are doing our no dig so killing off some weeds this is a first year no dig. So this technically was dug. I guess it's not really a no dig, but um, I'll do a video on no dig in general, but just a very quick touch up on it. It's essentially, we had to dig initially in order to create our mounds because there's no way in Mississippi you can have a garden without mounds. Um, there's just way too much rain all at once. So we had to dig and we also didn't have like mass amounts of money in order to bring in dirt or bring in compost so we had to do an initial dig and then when you do a dig this is what happens this weedy chaotic mess is what happens but it's also the reason why I'm converting to no dig so over time what I'm going to do is shift the plastic over it actually does not take very long I think this plastic's been down maybe two two weeks let's take a look yeah so it does not take very long it was as bad as that up there it was the same down here like you can see the little remnants there so by putting down the black plastic I'm killing off the weeds and I'm not going to dig up this section ever again I'm just going to apply the compost on top we have we'll have a lot of our own made compost you can see these are our piles I think there are five piles one over there somewhere so we will have compost that we'll be able to apply to the top of them and if I need a need to weed I'm hoping it's a lot more sporadic worst case scenario then I will use the black plastic um, as needed but I'm hoping after this round um, after I kill off all of these guys this grass here will be done um, interesting note, again, I'll probably do a quick video on this as well, but uh, we tried white plastic. Yeah, doesn't work. That's been on there for nah, probably two months. Doesn't kill. <laughs> Just works like a greenhouse. Somebody said, you know, you should use white plastic. It, it works way faster. So I was like, okay, well, let's try. Yeah, no, black plastic is by far the best. So the only things that we have in the garden right now are some turnips, 
which are actually pretty massive. I don't know if I can step on them because they're it's so much wet. But some of them are like just beautiful. Oh, here's one. Like, look at the size of that guy. He probably needs to be picked and eaten, but at this point, they're fine. So the weeds obviously have taken over in this area as well, and it's I can't put the plastic over top of them, but I'll be pulling out those turnips uh, any day. And we just have some cabbages left, but um, ideally there should be nothing left because we're going to be moving into our market garden and that will consist of some very specific uh, veggies. So this is our pond and it is so full. I'll see if I have a clip. Uh, I'm probably have an image if nothing else, but of how small it can actually be. But this is how big it is right now, which is, for me, I'm happy. I'm, I'm thrilled with it. Uh, there are fish and there are turtles within the pond. So it means more swimming space for them. And it means that their swimming space will probably stay a bit bigger this summer um, as the heat comes in and there's a lot less moisture. So the bigger it is, the more, the longer I'm hoping it will last um, a bit bigger for them. It has never dried up, as, but we haven't been here very long. And certainly if temperatures increase, um, it's a probability. So ideally we're hoping that doesn't happen though for, I don't wanna have to be running turtles over to the neighbors. <laughs> So with all the rain, one of the things that we put into the garden uh, in the summer was a native flower rain garden. This works in a couple of ways. It is a, well, let's start here. So we dug out this spot here um, to catch water. It has gravel down below um, and is just a little bit deep, not super, super deep, but you can see that it catches the water and it pulls it. And then ideally the plants will over time um, drink up the water. It also just, it just slows it down because otherwise it was heading straight towards the bottom of our house. But there is actually a second part to it, which is this mound. So we took the dirt that we dug out from here and we ended up with this big mound. And we use this mound to block off the water as it pours in and it literally does just come straight down and pour in and then now it ricochets off and starts flowing out this way adding in there that there's a bunch of native plants and flowers in there in the summertime in the springtime well we're just going to get a bunch of rain now um, but in the summertime in the springtime it will be just bursting with flowers actually already have one already right here so these flowers are great because they'll add to the abilities to suck up moisture and then feed our pollinators. Plus it looks really nice. So February for us is also a time of tree fertilization and pruning. So these are our muscadines. I have spent quite a bit of time pruning the muscadines. I still can see a couple of spots like I miss, but uh, overall I've pruned them back a fair bit so that they are ready for next season. For those of you who have never had a muscadine, they are an amazing large grape. A little seedy, but they taste awesome. So if you ever have the chance to grow muscadines, I highly recommend it. I love our muscadines. Wherever possible, we are trying to build native plant zones within the garden. Each year I build a new one or a new couple of them. And 
and uh, it's always exciting to watch them develop. So this guy's slowly starting to come together. Some pop-ups have come in. These little guys are all pop-ups, nothing, nothing I added, but these guys, this is some yarrow and some gara, um, and there's all kinds of different plants, the occasional weed that needs to come out. Grass is my nemesis. So um, we, this is a tiny, tiny section, but you can't quite tell. It'll be interesting for you guys to see this, but this entire row will all be um, native plants or flowers in general. Uh, I aim to try and have uh, native plants. Last year, you would have seen a native plant row over there along that side of the garden, um, but I will be having two this year, so doubling our flower power in the garden. And I do it for two reasons. One, nature friendly, of course, to help our pollinators, not just bees, but butterflies, bees, beetles, any bug in general. Uh, the more flowers we have, the better it is for nature. Uh, the more native flowers, uh, big box store flowers often are not good for, for uh, pollinators. So we'll plant a ton of those. And then the second thing I, oh, I meant to mention was it's also good for the garden. So I'm essentially bringing all the pollinators to the yard. So that helps a great deal when you're trying to produce things like pumpkins and different um, like tomatoes and stuff like that, especially tomatoes because only native bumblebees are best uh, for pollinating them. They need the shake, shake pollination technique. So this is one of our field spaces that we leave protected for habitat and it's been really busy uh, all winter I would say. You can see like these grasses here, hard to see, but um, they get used in bird and nests and the seeds get eaten. In the back the brush as all has seeds in it, they've been eaten. We'll see tons of birds in and out throughout here as well as we know there's critters down below hiding underneath. Uh, there's definitely some frogs in this section. I need to put a pond in here. Well, I kind of have one already being created. So we continue to leave um, space specific for nature all winter. One of the things that is nice to see this time of year is our carpet of clover. It's absolutely, it's really kind of so pretty tons of little dew drops on them but the carpet of clover is awesome because by the time the bees start coming out these guys will have tons of flowers providing bees with an awesome source of nectar early on uh, in the season so I'm super excited to see lots and lots of clover back here. We haven't seen any bees yet uh, might be a bit early I'm kind of to be honest I'm a little bit surprised we've had some pretty nice days but uh, it's just not their time yet so I look forward to seeing them very soon. So our poor chickens have been living in the mud for the last oh at least two months so not the not a thrill for them so I try to let them out as much as possible so they can get out of the mud and into the grass and certainly it's better for their health to be uh, out of that out of the area that they tend to poop in so it's much better for them roaming around the only challenge is is despite the fact that I have a little temporary fence over there and I've made it so that they can't go underneath the house they still sneak down that back corner walk all the way around and walk into the front of the garden i need probably to put in a fence but i uh i haven't had a chance yet so i will do that i just love it when they run they're little fuzzy bums look at them go they really are so sweet so i'll walk you around this way That's turtle log down there. I don't know if you can see it. 
and there's no turtle on it right now but we've had about seven turtles on turtle log uh, recently so they're out and about and unlike the chickens the ducks love the the moisture definitely having a good time in the rain so if you haven't seen our videos this uh, the ducks were added this year um, just recently actually in the last couple of weeks and we've been very excited to have them they are so cute they've just started to come over a little bit to me so you see how they're coming over that's uh they were terrified of me for the most part they'd run but uh, i'm slowly getting them used to us and hoping that it won't be long that they come right on over but they've been super super fun So as you can tell by our sporadic splashdown at the sudden rain, it's definitely been a wet February uh, and I think there's quite a bit still to come. So for us, things are really about um, seedlings. Let me, I have those, I have lots of seedlings on the go. Um, and then we also are just preparing gourds. We make gourds as crafts for the market, so we'll have those. But I'm really looking forward to the 2020 farmers market season it's such a I just enjoy the experience so much and it's such a great group of people so super excited to be hanging out in the farmers market but I still have a ways to go not till June so lots of growing to do lots of crafting to do until then um, and that's a big part of our plans for for now now if the soil would dry up I could get the um, market garden going which is still a till garden for for now but long term that will be no till in the future as well so yeah, so look forward to some videos coming up. Uh, we will have a video on explaining and talking about no dig, the value of it. Uh, I'm definitely gonna focus on that. Probably quite a few duck videos along the way. I'm really enjoying those guys. And for those of you that are cruise fans and are travel fans, uh, we definitely have uh, cruise videos coming and we still have some travel videos coming for just in around Mississippi. And there will also be some community stuff on the go. So lots of videos and lots of different content and uh, we'll keep sharing with you guys. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks for hanging with us and checking out the farm. Do me a big favor, be our YouTube friend and hit that subscribe button. And other than that, be friendly, be kind.